Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Oh, it finally happened, James. The world needed it, I, I felt. What do you mean? Adele. Adele is no longer with who was banned. Who was he, anyways? I don't... Look, we've, we've had this discussion maybe, I think, within the first 10 episodes. I think I called the episode, Dude, You're Getting Adele. And it was... <laughs> yes. About this guy, right? And... The this mystery, Abernathy. <laughs> yeah, the mystery. This haberdasher. This fucking this Ned Abernathy or whatever his name is. The mystery behind this guy was always puzzling to me, of why Adele ended up with him. I never solved it. I never understood it. I thought maybe he was either rich, yeah, or a record producer, or super talented in some way, some way that that did not show. Couldn't, at all. Couldn't figure it out. That didn't show at all. We no. thought maybe there's a hidden, <laughs> you know, crazy talent and, and amazing person in there. Because we had heard that they had been together, broken up, gotten back together, they end up having a kid. I, I don't I don't know what the sitch is. And I was like, man, this guy must be Ronaldo. He must be one of the hottest men on the face of the planet. And then he pops out at an award show and it looked like Peter, he looks like Peter Jackson, like yeah. Peter Jackson's brother. He looked like he'd been sleeping in a cave mm -hmm. for maybe 14 years and then just popped up and was like, oh, hey. And this is any, nothing I think, about, I think I'll just marry Adele. Right. Nothing about his appearance. It's his like. No, it's it is. Almost, but it's almost like <laughs> it's, to we're me. not, not like how he looks. It's the effort that he puts into it, which is negative amounts, right? Yeah. Himself. So it was like the the disheveled kind of suit and the hair, and it, he just looked like he did not try at all. He That's looked all. Yeah, he looked like he had pulled a suit out of a box. You, you know when you move behind the thrift store before yeah. they had gotten it into the thrift store to put on the hanger. They do have it in boxes out in the back. Yeah, it's it's like when you move and you have all these extra clothes that you're not wearing, and you take it down to the thrift store, and you're like, ah, I'll get rid of this. They're not open. You leave it by the back door. I don't door. need to iron this whatsoever. Yeah. I don't need to do anything but just drop it off. Adele's husband bought, goes to the box. Bought the, yeah, just bought the suit, put it on, wrinkled, was just like, uh, looked like he hadn't showered, maybe shaved in a few days. I could never understand the mystery behind this guy and why Adele married him, right? Now, this is all over. We haven't had uh, an album from Adele in quite a while. Yeah, but she does. Hello. She does take her time. She takes her time, and that's fine. She takes fine. her time. She drops when she wants to. What I found fascinating was when, when this bombshell hit. Is it, let's face it. I thought there is no way a guy like that would fuck up a relationship like Adele. Like you go to the ends of the earth. To, to make that work, right? You iron the suit. Yeah, you do anything. You trim up the beard. You do anything because it's Adele. Yeah. Let alone what they were living in some, uh, what was that crazy castle they had? Like, you saw it's it on Adele. 60 Minutes. It's Adele, bro. It's Adele. it's Adele. And look, for for her weight size, she's attractive. She's an attractive woman, right? For Adele. No, you're not going to give me that one, huh? I'm not because I think what comes into play here has to be an insecurity on her part. It has to be. She must not know how fucking amazing she, she is. is. She must just be a normal girl like all of us, despite her talents it's and crazy, her amazingness. Right? Yeah. She must be like, I'm fat and ugly, where yeah. everyone else is like, you're gorgeous and rad and you seem like super fun yeah. as well as insanely talented. But... You know, the real deal is, you know, stars. They're just like us. They are. 
but I, 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 I've, I, I think I've got that a friend must like that. be it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got a friend who's dude's really good looking, just d- does not know it. And you're like, man, what two, I, two of those friends we have, you know, one of them, you probably know both of them to be honest with you, but both of them, I'm just like, man, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're, the wheels are spinning in your mind. I'm right trying now. to think of who it is. Yeah, if you're watching the video show, you can literally see wheels turning inside Jable's mind right now. Can you give me the first letter? C. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The other yes, guys. The, yes, other, the other guys. Yes. J. And um, yes, and just can't can't doesn't see it. Doesn't understand doesn't it. Doesn't see it. It's crazy. So I, I I do it. like I do kind of understand that part. Um, and with girls, it's even worse. I mean, she can be the most amazing thing. And then you'll still see on, on, you know, I'm sure on Twitter and all this fucking bullshit of her weight and whatever. And it's got to get to you. And she's probably before she was even famous, it was probably even worse. She's going to drop a banger of an album. though Uh, next, Like, and that's why the internet uh, was rejoicing uh, of like, Hey, could Adele, well, could she actually make an album without a breakup? That was the other thing that people were, were asking online but she did hello, didn't she? Yeah. What, what do you think hello is about? Yeah, but she was in a relationship <laughs> when she wrote it. What? What do you think hello, hello is about? It's about a girl who just won't give up on some ex. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. How are you? It's Look, been, I know what it is. I haven't know thought about you is. in years is I what she's saying. Is. Um, you know, never mind. I'll find someone like you. I look. I could go on and on every song for Adele, and I love Adele for that. And I oh, think, absolutely. I think she needed it, which is why the internet rejoiced. This guy got pounded too on on social media, where it was just like, "Bro, how do you fuck that up? How do you fuck that up?" Either way, really looking forward to this new album. Sure. Really want to dig my my teeth into it. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be juicy. It's going to be juicy. I cannot wait. Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. Look, I'm I'm Adele's one of the, the best artists on the planet, so I'm stoked whenever she comes out with a new album. I hope it's soon. Yeah. You know? Hope it's soon. She's hope got a she's kid, too. Been they have a writing. kid, right? Yeah, they yeah. have a kid. Yeah. I don't know if she writes her own music. I'm not sure. Um, she must. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, she must. She's on that level of the Beyonce level where people are just tuning, like, turning in the greatest songs. So I'm not sure, actually. I'm not sure. It'd be sure interesting to find out. Yeah. Even on the internet, though, they wouldn't tell you that, would they? Yes, they would. Yes, Jessie. they would so say if, if whether that, she wrote. You betcha. So Gosh, if you let me see if I could turn this thing on. If you now, actually button, had access to the where internet, where is the button for the World Wide Web that you turn it on? With? <laughs> I think for you, yeah. I think for new for you, we just need a uh, a giant globe installed on your thing, and it, that just stands for the World Wide Web, and you just press that, and then you're in there. That you know? would be great. Could yeah. we do that? Ah, we could. We could. Why don't you look that up? I'm gonna go on my. I'm gonna go on my my sermon here. I'm gonna get in my soapbox for Kanye real quick. I want to talk about Kanye. I know you do. Oh boy, I know you do. Man, that was magic. The Sunday service that Kanye put on at Coachella was pure magic. Wasn't crazy about the pinhole view. Sure. Like the whole time. Very jarring, hard to get the whole scope. scope. Yeah, no, I, I really bad choice yeah. artistically. I understand going for it and wanting to try things and, and, and being different, right? The problem is when you have a moment that big, and look, I don't know what the ratings are, what the final numbers were mm-hmm. for, for that live stream, but I can tell you this it was trending number two in the world behind Easter for Christ's sakes, on Twitter. <laughs> so they had to have been massive. And every, it seemed like everybody and their mother had flipped it on and watched it. Right. And uh, I wish we could have had a full screen of that. However, it was pretty incredible. The, the, everything that he put on and did and all that other shit. Like, yeah. I mean, man, Chance the Rapper, crushed. Yep. Kid Cudi came out crushed. Obvi. Uh, DMX at one point preached, preached. He gave yeah. a full on. It was a full sermon on. in the middle of this thing. Here's the, you didn't believe it was DMX. 
I didn't. It was. <laughs> I was like, that voice is so unmistakable. Yeah, I guess it's a voice. So uh. my facial recognition is usually uh. unparalleled. Yes. I guess you can recognize voices. voices. Yeah. And so the two kind of got crossed, crossed there. It was an up view. You know, I don't know. I couldn't see his face. Really. Man, but it's, it's X. It's X going to give it to you. For sure. Uh, um, uh, that was, uh, you know, any Sunday in a black church? No, I mean, look, it's not any Sunday. You're getting Chance the Rapper and DMX no, to show but, up. No, um, but just the whole vibe, the whole thing. I mean, it, it was incredible. they have fun like that every Sunday. They do. But this was all set to Kanye's music. So, like, you got to hear songs from College Dropout, his first album, all the way through. I mean, he dropped a new song that nobody had ever heard before. Right. It was, it, to me, it was incredible. There was what, the estimate was somewhere between like three to 500 people there. Because there was people out in the crowd. The choir singer. So he had. Yeah. But but some, were, some choir, were just dancing. basically. Yeah. Um, I think they were all singing, but yeah. So, uh, so, some were just dancing on the hillside. And then, because okay. they weren't plugged in. I looked for mics and things like that. Got and it. I was like, man. It was unbelievably ambitious. I thought it turned out great, except for the camera angle. I don't know. Camera angle, a couple times why. the mics were out. I mean, it really was ambitious. Yeah, but, uh, but I, I, I don't mind that because, look, you have 500 pe- people, 500, that you're all trying to coordinate in sort of a last-minute effort. I mean, that was only announced maybe three or four weeks ago. That he was going to do this Sunday service, so Coachella didn't really have that that much time to prepare. Right. Um, Kanye's been doing this for weeks. Right. But out, you know, on a smaller, much much smaller scale, wherever the fuck he does it in the Hollywood Hills, or and or, whoever the fuck comes, and I don't know. Well, you're you've got to be invited. This was the first time he he had opened it up to the public, essentially. Right. And man, I, I, I want to say it was close to two hours he performed. I mean, it was yeah. it was crazy and amazing. He was crying. Other people were crying. If you were there watching all of this happen, it, it was probably a, like an unbelievable spiritual experience. I mean, wa- even watching it, just having it on the background on Easter Sunday, I right. felt great. Right. I felt great about it. That pinhole view, though, really got me. It really got me. I was and just I- like, ah, can we get out of this? And I'm, you know, talk about bringing black culture to the whites. Yeah. To the whites. Because, you know, you say you were moved or whatever. Like I said, you've been to a black church before, right? I have, Sunday. yes. Yep. So, again, it really is like that. Every, it is. Every time. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the choir and the, you know, the crying and. Mixed with jumping, Kanye, though. Laughing. Absolutely. But um, I guess I couldn't get that out of my mind is all these, all these Coachella white whites people yeah. that were just like, oh, this, how in the, and every black person is like, yeah, this is what we fucking do. Right. But if you're looking at it from a cultural perspective, you yes. still need somebody like Kanye West to come out and try and yes. attempt to do something like this. Yes. Because if you don't put the Kanye West songs in there, I think everyone just... I don't, n- nobody's coming out for a, for a gospel Sunday service mass right. at Coachella. Right. L- let's face it. You're right. still partially on Molly. There's, right. some, there's some other drugs mixed into your like, system. What are they thinking? Like what? I'm just sort of trying to get into the mind of all the Coachella whites and just thinking, what? You know, like, what are they thinking? I'm gonna, I'm are, gonna they, be, are they wasted? Going to be real. These on hard drugs. Like yeah. When you're trying to shake off a two day, uh, like, let's face it, you're on a three day bender at this point. You probably, you probably most, rolled in. Yeah. You probably rolled in Thursday night. You're, you're amped. Sure. You get fucked up. Coachella right. starts Friday. Yeah. You go hard Friday night, obviously first day of Coachella. You wake up a little sleepy Saturday midday, hang out by the pool a little longer, go mm-hmm. in a little later and then it kicks in. Sure. Once those, you know, that Red Bull and, and pure MDMA kicks in around you know, nine, right? Boom. You're back at it again and you're ready. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday you wake up and you're like, Oh man, I want to see Kanye, but I've got to stand in line at six because he's performing at 9am. Yeah. So you're still feeling the remnants of whatever drugs you were on. And then you get taken to church like that. I would, I would have to imagine 
it's got to kick in of like, wow, I'm, you're probably having a little better experience than you, you, you thought you might have. Right. You know? Right. Like you actually did something on Easter Sunday. Because it's rare that a Coachella falls on Easter too, where you're like, man, I've been doing so much drinking and drugs. I, should I be guilty? Should I feel guilty that I'm That's at Coachella I mean. not are they at thinking, Easter with yeah, my are family? They, uh, are they just feeling bad? Are they feeling good? Are they most? Are they drunk? I don't know. Seemed very, they seemed very, I mean, nobody was jumping for d- crazy dancing Kanye style. They were all kind of locked Taking it in. in. Yeah, yeah. Locked in. So, oh, to be in the mind of the Coachella Whites. Now, do we know? I enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed it, yeah. Do, uh, do, do I know if my friends went? Yeah. Yeah, they didn't go. They didn't go. No. Too early. Too early. Too early. I will say this though, they were going, they, they had a, they work with Ariana Grande all the time. So they had, you know, backstage press passes with all that shit. You started at six cause she played that night later on that night. Mm-hmm. You start at six like that. I don't, you can't make it to, you can't make it. And then who, Ariana Grande probably went off at like midnight. She probably, you know, finished her set at midnight. And that's you're dealing a, with shuttles and That's drives. an 18 hour day yeah. on top of all of the rest of it. So because once you get to the festival, you're not going back and forth. So you go at Too the far time, of a walk, yeah, yeah, walk, shuttle back to the place, whatever. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you you go at the time that you can t- take it into the evening, right, 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 right. right. I yeah, w- I would have napped it up. Rough I would have probably gone to see Kanye and then napped it up. So gone then, back to your then, place, yeah. And come back wow. at like six. Totally. Come back at six p.m. Either way, if you were at home watching it. I, look, I'm not a religious dude. I don't go to church that much, but like it just felt nice having it on in the background. And I was like, shit, yeah. this is awesome. There was something about it that, that was, that was, was really great. And it was interesting. There was lots of layers to, um, just to, there was lots of layers to everything he was doing. So yeah, I, I was, there was, there was some people who were knocking, he had a, a merch tent set up, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, some people were pissed, pissed that he was selling socks for $50 that said like, you know, holy day or whatever and like the the outfits the outfits they were wearing in the thing mm-hmm. were on sale and like i guess the sweatshirts or whatever were 225 dollars they were charging for it but i will say this uh, like in in the, in his defense on that he's got to pay for all that stuff it's super high quality by the way so it wasn't like it was a guild and t-shirt that he was trying to pass off on people yeah they don't sell that merch in real life so he, whatever he did, he had to make it in a short amount of time right. and get it there just to get it there. And it was like, hey, if you want to be dressed like the people in the thing, you can do it. And nobody was pushing it during the concert. So, yeah, that's I'll, really... g- I'll give I'll give him a break on that. Uh, no, a lot of people were pissed off about it. They were like, well, it looks, you know, thank thank goodness you could exploit God on on Easter Sunday. And it I was don't just think like, that's connected in I, any way. I didn't either, but they did. So there, there was a lot of. People online, uh, I think it was Complex Magazine or somebody. Um, but you know, I, to me, I just looked at it as a way of like, hey, if you want to dress up like the choir, and you know, those clothing takes a long time to make, especially in bulk. I know this from just some, you know, we sell t- we've sold T-shirts for Ross Patterson Revolution, Van and Ham shirts, a lot of them with lead by iron. Um, those guys get those guys get it out f- the fastest I've ever seen. Right, uh, leadbyiron.com. Um, and even then, from design to just physically getting your hands on it, it's probably three weeks. And it's like, dude, he didn't even have three weeks to prepare. So I'm sure yeah. all that shit was shipped in and last minute and especially something high quality. Our, you know, we're just selling T-shirts for Christ's sakes. These are like nice sweatshirts and things like that. Yeah. But uh, no, look, I, I, I'll, I will praise him across the board because it was awesome to see. I enjoyed it. it. You need more artists to take risks like this. Or if, if you're truly about the culture, as everybody else says, bring it into to more things that are mainstream like this. That's a, that's a perfect crossover to do it at. Like only Kanye could get away with holding a Sunday service on Easter Sunday at Coachella yeah. on the side of a mountain at and, and everybody being amped enough to, to, to watch it that they streamed it live right. on YouTube. Uh, YouTube, I'm going to give you a shout out. Um, look, not only because... You could subscribe to our show on it, but there wasn't any any problems with that live stream. Yeah, no, um, they did it. And I, l- look, we had some problems earlier, a couple of days with streaming things on Coachella. I found out what it was. I went what? through Apple TV and not 
dish. Okay, yeah. Okay, so okay. It, it was dish that right, was right. that is unprepared for that type of bandwidth. Got you. Not Apple TV. Once I swapped over to Apple TV, I was like, oh, all right, cool. We got everything. Nice. Uh, we're good to go. So I didn't have any problems with that stream whatsoever. Sweet. Uh, which is great because that's look, that's the future. Um, I know their streaming was is up like 118 percent versus last year. It just keeps doubling and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's cool, man, because, you know, if you can't if you don't have a chance to go, not that I was amped this year about uh, the, the lineup. Um, so I w- we wouldn't have gone anyways, but it was nice to flip over and see a few people who, that I wanted to see on there. Definitely. Um, and then it, it, it knocked, you know, this this Sri Lanka thing right off of the headlines i've i look we woke up to this story yeah um of these suicide bombers there was eight coordinated attacks in sri lanka which is in the indian ocean um kind of off the coast of like india i guess yeah, you would say it is. and it's an island off the coast of yeah um eight coordinated attacks more than 200 people dead on easter sunday it was islamic terrorist but huge surprise but there was that story was buried I've never seen anything like it that like after, you know, 11 a.m. And I don't know if it's because everybody was showing, you know, pre-taped segments yeah. on all of these networks because it was Easter. I, I didn't see any news about it today either, really, to be honest with you. Um, no, and I saw some later yesterday. Right. Later. But um, anything in the morning, there was nobody there to do breaking news. Everything was pre-taped and all the people were home just being like hope nothing big happens yeah and it did but nobody nobody ca- nobody cared it wasn't it, ha- it has not been a top story in america yeah for not the last two days as- and it's strange like i i can't figure it out because i mean I-, I was reading up on the story i was like man am i missing something like it was were they in war with some that somebody else or you know was it a country war N- no it was none of that. One of the guys who, because it was all suicide bombers, had waited in line for a buffet and waited in line patiently for a half hour for an Easter Sunday buffet. Right when he walked up to get his food, boom, you know, blew, blew the whole place up. <sighs> yeah. And there was, again, no coverage of this at all. And it, it seemed really, really odd. And I think, and this is my personal opinion. I don't know if this is true or not. I think, American media does not want to paint this Islam against us narrative, you know, which look, it's there. It's out there. I don't, I don't really give a shit. Um, they never do. They never do. And I feel that they bury the story. I feel like this, this story was huge around the world, except in America. Possibly. And that's my personal opinion on it. All of the articles that I read came from Europe overseas and uh I, I i just i couldn't wrap my mind around why this wasn't a big enough story for anybody to to really report here in america yeah um but uh, you know I, I guess i don't know i follow the trends on twitter for U- united states only because i don't a lot of the shit's foreign language you know when you start to get into like worldwide globe and stuff like that yeah here it was all kanye it was Easter Sunday, Kanye, again, like nothing else was going on around the world. It was that story. Um, the media to me, is, it's, it's just getting more and more dangerous where, you know, if you're picking the stories and the narratives you want to tell and not really talking about what's going on in the rest of the world, what's the, what's the point? What's yeah. the point of any of this right now? Um, yeah. And we watched that thing on 60 Minutes last night with the, uh, the Russians. Yeah. You know, the Russian spies and all that stuff and the cyber warfare that's going on. To me, our own media in the United States has become a, a cyber warfare of just stories they want to tell, um, depending upon, you know, who who they're owned by. You know, Bezos, you know, owns Washington Post and all that other stuff. Uh, this open border bullshit that, that's being pushed, um, you know, by the far by the mm-hmm. far left. Uh by not, by not telling a story like this or just kind of burying the story like this, it, it fits better for them and their narrative of like, oh, yeah, everything's still safe and open borders are great and you can just let anybody in and it's fine. We don't need to vet anybody and it's fine. Well, Nothing the, like this will Islamic, ever happen here. Yeah. Because I, I think, look, 
if you're able to do this on a coordinated attack there, I, I think you could do this here. I really do. And yes, by not by not telling Americans about it, uh, I, I look, I think it leaves us wide open as a country for this to happen with us. Well, there's two Islamic women in Congress, right? Yeah. Maybe more. Two, right? Uh, I think one. Uh, that, that there is two. Ilman chick out of There's one that Detroit. wears the hijab and there's one yeah, that yeah, doesn't. Yeah. Okay, basically. gotcha, gotcha. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't work for our narrative of you know exactly exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it doesn't work. What we're you know what we're saying is you know we're embracing that there. That's not you know there's some crazy radicalized islam and then there's not um but i just it, it's always... again if you don't report this, this is going to happen here um one of these yeah. days and it that sucks uh because yeah i like even just reading this like what to look for what to you know like i was like fuck man homeboy was just standing in line at a buffet for 20 minutes half hour and everybody else was just like it was like nothing else was going on in that guy yeah, like we'll, it was just another, you know. We'll see what else comes out about it when they finally. I don't think there's going to be much. You don't think they're going to finally start talking about it? Um, Probably I, not. I, I don't. I don't think there's going to be much about it. So there, there, there will be some other news story this week. Mark my words. Right. That will be massive. That will eat all this up, and that's well, they're it. More into the Mueller report, which is over. We're at, like that's all done. Not, not to them. I know. I mean, look, if, like just breezing down the the. The top 10 topics, right, Twitter-wise, right? Which, which is what everybody pretty much uses for news these days. A lot of people. Earth Day is number one. Today's Earth Day. Rad. Oh, is it? Uh, great. Gosh, I forgot about Monday that. Monday motivation. Second, Monday morning, which <laughs> it's 11 a.m. Uh, we're recording this out on Monday, so good for you. Right. Seth Moulton. You know who that guy is? No. No. Uh, another sure. guy who's running for... Uh, President on the Democratic side, which thank God, because I was worried that they weren't going to have enough people running. Gosh, are they going to they're going to have to do it separate, right? The debates. Yeah. I mean, there's no way they two can different all... stages. Yeah. Uh, Monday thoughts impeach Donald Trump. And again, that's that is just another fucking issue of cyber warfare. No one's talking about impeaching no Donald one's Trump. No going to impeach. I mean, no, you've look again, you have. You've 18 months until this election. Less now. Less than 18 months. Focus on the candidates. Um, but look, that that's what's... Tra- like, nothing Sri Lanka. Nothing about these people. Nothing, barely, barely any coverage of this crazy, catastrophic event. Nuts. Nuts. And, and look, when things like this aren't covered, when s- news stories like this happens, when people aren't being told what's happening in their own country or around the world or whatever that's when that that's when the voting uh comes into place of like you know what man if they don't really care about us you know for if the media or government and all this other shit they don't really want to chat about what's going on we're just gonna vote whoever the fuck we wanted right donald trump got elected right cool uh the president of the of of the ukraine who got elected last night is a comedian Zero political experience. Same as Trump. Yep. He is a comedian who played the president on a Ukraine TV show. Can you imagine? He is now president. And they think that he can do a better job than any politician in that country. This this is what's happening. and Because the guy, I, I mean, it's very, fuck, what would you call it? It's, uh, wag the dog-ish. I don't, I don't you know. Okay. <laughs> Not wag the dog. What was the? Uh, it is the, no the Warren Beatty movie where he just ran and just oh, said whatever he wanted. Oh, uh, yeah, something bull. Yeah, bull dirt, bullhorn or something bull, like that. Yeah, bullgarf. Yeah, whatever it was. Bullgarf. Yeah, yeah. bullgarf. <laughs> um, you guys know what we're talking about. Bullgarf. But it's it's very similar to that where you're you're just like, all right, cool, man. Could this really happen in the TV show? He plays a teacher. Like a just a nobody teacher who decides to run for president of the Ukraine ends up winning. That was the basis of that TV show. Now he decided to run in real life. I don't know whether it was a joke or not. 
he did give a sincere speech last night that just said, look, I'm not going to let you down or this country down. So like, you know, if, if he was, if he was to say ah, jokes on you, I'm yeah. not, this isn't real. I'm done. Then I would be like, all right, cool. But it genuinely seems like he wants to do it. So he's going to do it. Um, the, the, the size of victory was crazy to me. It was a landslide. 76% to 24. So look, Trump, Trump and Hillary was what? You know, fifty-one to fifty. Like, yeah. I mean, it was. I mean, it was close. Some of these states came down to ten thousand votes. Right. This was nowhere near being close. Nowhere near it. And yeah. the weird thing is, is I had said a few years back that if John Stewart ran, I think he could have won. Um, at yeah. Some, I, for real. Yep. I really do. It, I do too. And uh, I think if he would have came in around. The Obama era, right around there. Let's say Obama never existed, right? Yeah. And let's say John Stewart threw his hat in the ring. I, th- I genuinely think in 08, he probably could have beat McCain and Sarah Palin. I think it would have been pretty what fucking close. What if he close. ran right now? What do you think? It's too late now. Um, again, there's 27 people now or 30, 39, 58 people who are running for Democratic president. I think it's you can't cut through it now. Mm-hmm. I think the one person who could is Michelle Obama. I think if she ran right now, she could beat the entire Democratic Party and it wouldn't even be close. Yeah, just judging Dead on serious. book sales. Yeah, <laughs> highest of all time. <laughs> and and all for time. anybody who's been listening to the show since you know the day, the day one homies out there who've been listening to since, since day one, I, I, we, we have a book coming out uh, August 20th through Random House, same, you know, Penguin, Random House bought Penguin. Mm-hmm. Um, same as Michelle Obama. And I, I had said last year on the show, I was like, man, I did not want to come out anywhere within four to five months of her. Sure enough, she's on pace for the highest selling memoir of all time. Yeah. That's how much love there is out there for Michelle Obama. Oh, it's if she crazy. stepped into the race tomorrow or the day before these, uh, these debates start, I think she would wipe out that, that entire Democratic Party. And, and that, that would be a, a coin toss for her, between her and Trump. I don't know who would win that one, to be honest with you. I don't know either. I, 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 part of me would lean towards her, unless the economy's still booming. But uh, I don't know. Right. But uh, she doesn't want to. She does not want to, no. And, and I, get, anyone I get it. Because anyone smart wouldn't. Yeah, I get it. I mean, right look, now? You just spent eight years in there. That's a nightmare. Ugh. And then the White uh, House, you're gonna go back. You're gonna go back to what the White House Hillary? again for another for another eight. You fucking <laughs> yeah. You just Strange. love it so much there. I mean, Hillary, Hillary would do all of it. The weird thing is, though, if you, if you Why? if you, here's the thing, if you really think about it, being the first female president of the United States, like to me, that's that's a hard part in history to turn down. It's a hard part in history to turn down, but it's a I like hard... how I'm referring to it as an actor's role, by the way. It's a, yeah, that's it's a, a hard, hard part. part. It's, it's a hard, hard part, part to turn that's down. That's a difficult role to take. Is yeah. it? But but it is. like I, To me, how do you pass up on history like that? Yeah, but the pressure of it would almost be unbearable. I mean, you are, you have a whole gender on your shoulders, yeah. basically. But you've been there. Like, you've been there for eight years, so you know what to expect. I don't know. Your husband was president. I think the only president. one that could take on that kind of pres- pressure was at Hillary? that point was Hillary because she's a robot. She's a sociopath. <laughs> she doesn't have any feelings or real realness, right? So she would just say, fuck it. Yeah. Say what you want. I'm going to do my job. But I think anyone smart or anyone with uh, any kind of like real feelings, uh, the pressure of that would be almost unbearable. But I, I think, look, with this Ukrainian guy, I think more and more things like this are going to happen. Sure. Around the world. I, I just think people are fed up with it. Um, so I, I actually, because a lot of people hit me up and say, hey, we talk about the story. I actually wasn't that surprised at this. I'm, I think th- this trend is going to continue around the world. Um, not in every country, but, right. but in a lot of countries. That's just, uh, that's my personal gut feeling. I think everybody's just fed up with, with politics and, and government and, and the, the stalemate and not getting anything done where it's just like, all right, great. 
you want an upheaval? Let's have an upheaval. We'll, we'll, we'll give a, a reality. And everything. A reality star, you know, we'll make him president. We'll make a comedian president of a country. Like, I, th- I think that's where it's, where it's all headed, where people are going to get fed up with it. I think, look, eventually it'll, it'll reverse course. That's what I mean. So it's all cyclical, right? So yeah. then people will get fed up with that yeah the not you know the no one in there has any experience and then the new narrative will be like there's too many people here who haven't i've served for da 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 and yeah. then we'll start to be more we'll want a little bit more structure i think this may be good in that it can people like share coming to the other side i think slowly the democratic party being so divided now and and the old school people or real just middle of the line democrats are like hey aoc no yeah right yeah so this may be good to kind of like a controlled burn or show everyone what happens when right or, or the look or the aocs might be the next generation oh, God. i know but but you never know you never know um, yeah, you never know. Look, the, the, uh, Trump's doing some radical shit that I'm, you know, I dig. Like oil sure. prices have sp- spiked right now, mm-hmm. in particular today, because he said he was done buying uh, oil from Iran. It's a great. We're we're done with that, and they were exporting. I think it was like a, a million barrels or something like that. Uh, the the trade war with China, you know, trying to get better deals and all that shit. I, truthfully, man, like we've been getting fucked on that shit for years, so. I'm cool. Why do we have to buy oil from Iran? Let's get the fuck out of there. Mm-hmm. Um, the the thing with China, dude, we buy so many Chinese goods in this country. Like, dude, if you're going to put tariffs on ours, let's put tariffs on yours. Like, let's even this out a little bit. These are the unpleasant things, though, you have to do if you're in it for the long haul. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I, could you get this done if it, if it wasn't a politician, though? That's why I bring all this up. I, I don't know. Would a politician even attempt this? Probably not. You'd be worried about pissing off somebody along the line. Yeah, you're just in the in the machine, but I don't know. With this guy in the Ukraine, I, I'll be curious to see as to what he does. Like, I, I bet he's got some radical shit where he's just like, hey, nothing's really been working over here. Let's give this a go. So I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think what the next comedian here would be. I'm telling you, if, if John, I think John Stewart, Stewart would have had a legitimate yeah. shot. Yeah. at it it depends on timing too of, of when you're you're doing all all this stuff and like where america's at and everything i think look i think 16 was a perfect time for somebody like trump to get in and just disrupt the entire system yeah just the right time at the right place because i don't even remember him in these debates like he was way down at the bottom of these debates like he, he didn't have many many points in the polls at the at, at, you know at the point that he first started running, he just slowly started gaining steam as, as he went along. Uh, this Buttigieg guy, yeah. that's, that's the guy right now who's slowly starting, starting to gain steam on that other side of the party where it's mm-hmm. just like, yeah, even, like, be, even Beto and those guys are getting pushed aside for this guy. And it's just like, who is this? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. least, you, you're asking the question, who is this guy? Right. So what experience does he have? He's a mayor. Right. He's a mayor of, of a, He's a glad hander. South Bend. Maybe that's what we Indiana. need. Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm curious to see even this guy is. I know nothing about him. Yeah. Nothing. I know I know some very like he's thirty seven. He doesn't it's not like he has some crazy life experience that I know about. You know what I'm saying? So young. <laughs> so young. Child bride. I wonder if so what, he'll be thirty eight next year. Imagine a thirty eight year old president. That's, that'd be wild, wouldn't it? It would really... I mean, he he's how old? 30? He'll be 37 now, so he'll be 38 next year when the election he's happens. He's a millennial. He is. No, he is, for real. And that's why people love him. Like that, that's why the, That's why the millennials We've love him, where it it's up. just like, all right, cool, You're a man. millennial. Yeah. Because most of the excitement coming out of the camps is like, hey, man, he, he sounds like us, he talks like us, he's one of us, and it's just like, you know, that could be dangerous as well. You never know. Oh. <sighs> That last name's a hard one to get a hold of, though. Once you get it. Buttigieg. Buttigieg? Buttigieg, yeah. Buttigieg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buttigieg. 
<laughs> is it two uh, T's, but a judge? No idea. Cool. No idea. Look, I don't know. I don't either. I don't either. Uh, but since we were talking about memoirs with the, the Michelle Obama thing, mm. um, obviously Mass is coming out. Mm-hmm. But best, August 20th. Um, Prince has got one coming out. When's that coming? Through in? Random House. No. I, it just got announced maybe like 20 okay. minutes ago. Uh, that one is coming out October, October 28th. Who, who's writing that? That's what I asked. I was like, all right, cool. Is this the estate trying to cash in, you know, right. of writing a thing? Turns out he was, it was Prince and he had hired his own guy to help him write it. And, um, he was, you know, maybe three fourths the way through it, um, wow. right before he died. So they're going to push this over the edge with the estate's blessing at this point. So they're going to go in and give him, you know whatever was in the house and, and everything else to finish up this memoir. But uh, now that I'm amped about. You're so excited. Come on. Come on. You know. Oh, I do. You know my love for Prince. Obviously, Ross Patterson Revolutions. Oh, I do. Named after him, but uh, Prince and the Revolution. But uh, I, I look, I, I'm i amped about this. There was a there was a part in this article that I hope I hope they explore this more. Um, there was a part of this article that just said uh, how he cultivated his whole image and the mystique and the mystery behind him and everything else. Like, I hope he goes into great detail of like, hey, man, all of this was a fucking sham. Yeah, I would, I would love that. <laughs> you know I've said that before in the past where it's just like, man, if he was in on this joke the entire time for all of these years, it mm-hmm. would be the greatest thing in the world to me. Right. And I hope that's what it is. Obviously, I'll buy that the first day out. Obby. Love rock. Curry sales. Rock bio. Speaking of which, we watched that uh, Rolling, Rolling Stones, Stones last night on Netflix. Ole, ole, ole. Man, that was good. It was so good. That was like a Beyonce drop where it's like you didn't really know what was happening. And no. then it's just like this awesome, amazing shot. Great. Fu- I mean, anything you shoot in Latin America, by the way, whatever you think. Sure. Looks awesome. There's just so much. So many Color. colors yeah. and even the poverty stuff is looks cool. You know what I mean? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Jabe's loves more in this life than poverty stuff. You know, <laughs> Oh, just like a good black and white homeless man. Yeah. Oh. And a nice like uh, to, to hang up in your mansion. Up dog walking out of a cardboard box. Yeah. Hang yeah. that up right in the hallway to the study. Yeah. It's just the black and white, the the real wrinkled, weathered faces, you yeah, know, yeah, of, yeah. The, of the poverty stricken. <laughs> I just love looking at that <laughs> um, in my house. No, but it's for a documentary. It's just great. I mean, yeah, it just I, looks it just looks so cool. They have him in the um, graveyard with all the tombs. I mean, he. They did it right. Whoever did that documentary it was amazing. Cause look, Keith, Keith and those guys and Mick in particular, they don't give a lot of interviews. No. And they don't even give so any access to themselves. So that, and so he only in the, all of the Rolling Stone documentaries I've seen, they only do voiceover mm-hmm. interviews. So they'll never do. So it's a full interview, but yeah. it's not like a, you sit there with the camera and set up with the lights and everything and talk. Um, it really is just, they'll only do audio and And then the documentary documentarian can put it over whatever they want, Yeah, but that's all they give them. And then the end, uh, the culmination of, of it was cause it was their, their, uh, tour through, uh, South America, Latin America, and then, um, ending up in Cuba. Cuba. Yeah. And they gave the 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 first orders. Yeah. Yeah. Free concert there. Um, they've never played there. And it, man, it was, it was awesome. I love those nights where it's in, you, you have an accidental Netflix find. Yeah. That's amazing where you're like, mm-hmm. all right, cool. Mm-hmm. Cause usually you breeze through things and you're like, all right, let's just give this five minutes. Yeah. Let's just give it five minutes. If it sucks, we'll turn it off. Right. And then you end up going through like 18 things later and you never really watch the thing that you were probably wanting to watch. Yeah. This was one of those where it was just like, oh shit, I didn't know this was out. This is on Netflix. Awesome. All right. We'll give it, we'll give it five. Like it must, I haven't, I haven't heard any press on it. So right. it must be shitty. And then it came on. It was just like, oh my God, I was locked in. Documentary wise too. You do know 
within the first five minutes. We do. We're huge documentary fans. So like. So we tried another one right before it. Yeah. About the cre- creative the, brain the or creative something. Brain, yeah. And it was just cheesy voiceover. It was all about the guy that was making it, which I hate. <laughs> so I hate when a guy do- does a documentary guy, girl, whatever. Yeah. And they tell their story and they're of, the way, subject of, of why they decided to go on a journey. And you're like, you could have just went on the journey. Yeah. And I could have seen the journey, but now you're making it again, you know, about you. Yeah. And it's a, you know, it's a doctor walking through the woods for five minutes. <laughs> and he had a lot to say because he also wants to be a documentarian, right? Doctor why slash, not? right? Uh, why not? Always wanted to make a documentary. Yeah. Who hasn't? Who so, hasn't? So rule number one to me, don't make yourself the subject the other the other thing I, I had a hard time with which you know we ultimately flipped it off after five minutes and that was a first usually we say we're going to turn things off in five minutes and then never and we turn give it, it at off. least yeah, 15, 15 yeah and then we're like oh, really did give this five and then it turn was it off five whenever people talk about creativity and you know harnessing creativity and what they need and all that shit like i just get checked out on that what they need yeah, you know, people always need something of like, oh, I need incense or candles or a beautiful view or this to create X, whatever mm-hmm. that is. Either writing a book or playing music or, or whatever it is. I need some source of inspiration from the creativity. Oh, yeah. I can't, subs- yeah. I can't subscribe to that. Right. I'm like, bullshit, right. man. Right. I can just sit down and do it. If you're great enough, you can just sit down and do it anywhere. Does it, would it be nice to go to the south of France to harness your creativity? You bet. Sure. You bet it would. Sure. But that's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> that's Definitely. all I kept thinking. Yeah, and yeah, And it was yeah. like, the other thing that, that always is weird to me is when you're interviewing people about creativity who aren't successful. Like? Like the people in that documentary. Like the, the first few they started with, and I look, I know later on, you know, there was some famous people, but like sure, the first few the they started with, yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. hey man, like that's not <laughs> the person I want to model right, my right, creativity right. after. Yep, yep. Like that's not a good one to start with. Yeah, you know? I hear you. I hear you. Start with someone better yeah. than that. So. I got you. I got you. No. Yeah. 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 That's what I, me personally, like. Well, it was just a shitty doc. It was a shitty doc. <laughs> uh, Ole, it was just shitty. Again, you, you know, first mistake, like I said, he made himself the subject. And then it all is just a bunch of fucking b- bullshit fluff after that. Yeah. It's all how he, you know, feels about it. His journey. His journey. To find out about the creative brain. Why is it your journey? Yeah, I don't cuz he's trying to be creative. Who knows? Who knows what happens exactly. with that? Exactly. It's it's an out of touch old, weird doctor guy. Yeah. That wants to wanted so bad to be creative, but he wasn't, right? I guess. Clearly not. Uh, if what, this is his documentary. We gave it 5 minutes. We gave it 5. Don't, maybe maybe the don't documentary bother, was his by thing. the way. Maybe, no, maybe don't bother with thing. the creative brain, not that anyone would, maybe, but <laughs> Don't bother with the creative brain, but do bother with Ole, Ole, Ole. Yeah, yeah, that one's Rolling a good one, the Rolling Stones. Stones. I saw a story, though, that it's going to be made into a documentary, I guarantee it. And it's, this is your worst personal nightmare. Me. Yeah, oh, yeah. The seasteading. You know what that is? Uh, no. These people are building these, I, I mean, technically, it looks, I guess you would call it a house out in the middle of the ocean. Okay. So it's in international waters. So therefore, you're not a part of that country. Mm-hmm. Peter Thiel was was trying to do this forever, and then eventually gave up on it. Okay. Um, you know him. He's the he's the crazy big Silicon Valley yeah. guy. They modeled, uh, but he's like famously crazy. Gavin Belson's character on on Silicon Valley mm-hmm. after him. I don't know if he's crazy. Well, he's famously eccentric. Yes, we'll give him that. So he tried to build this city out in the sea, and it was. Uh, like off the coast of San Francisco, but it's like, hey, you're in international water. Kind of like when you go on a cruise and they tell you you're in international waters, you can do whatever you want at that right. point. Like 18 year olds can drink. And sure. You can do drugs. <laughs> Congratulations, you're in international waters. Brass dudes are legal. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We can do whatever you want. 
international waters. Nobody's protecting me from anything. Well, this guy had this Bitcoin entrepreneur, which nothing gets me for gets me more uh, jazzed up than a Bitcoin oh. entrepreneur. Love them. I love their top hats. Weird, weird looking dude. Mm. And he had this like younger, like Thai wife. Sure. Which I get why it. Not? Yeah, why not? But they built a they built one of these little seasteads out in the middle of it was thirteen miles off the coast of Thailand. And they were living in it. And like I mean, they've got videos of them, you know, popping champagne, like this is our new house. We live in the middle of the ocean. Like as boats go by, this thing was like swaying back mm-mm, and forth. Mm-mm, yep. Mm-mm. And I thought, no. <laughs> and then how do you, so you get down the the thing and take boats places to do things? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking kill and me. It was off the coast kill of me now. Uh, Phuket, you know? Um, so I, I guess you were, you know, boating back and forth into Thailand to get supplies and all that other stuff. Oh. Yeah. Imagine something happened to you there. Yeah. Go, go, if you if you can see, pull up a picture of it at home, if yeah, you're able to Google it, it's crazy looking. Where you're just like, all right. It just looks like a... looks like a water tower kind of. Yeah. It just looks like a, an observation tower, like at yeah. jail. Yeah. In prisons where they have, you know, where the snipers are. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah, it yeah. looks like. But I mean, clearly that, like there was beds and, you know, all kinds of shit inside. So I'm sure. But you know you're coming up against maritime law. Yes, yeah, <laughs> is you, that you what really it are. Is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened was the the, the government the in phrase. Thailand, yeah. they want to prosecute them and they want to put them under the death penalty because they're, they're saying they're putting their security at harm and their civilization at harm. Death penalty, huh? Well, it's Thailand. I mean, look, you spray paint something, you get don't you get hit with a cane? Oh, you get caned over there. Sure. Remember that that dude who got caned. Yeah. An American that kid was a years wild and years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's still. So if you're still getting caned for that, let's face it, if you're building a house 13 miles out in the ocean, and you they said it was killed. dangerous for boats to pass by too. Mm. I don't really know or believe that so no. much. Um, but it's a nice, that's a nice thing to say, to get rid of it. Yeah, because it's just threatening your. Yeah, your, 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 your bullshit. Like taxes. You don't pay taxes. That was the whole thing yeah, with Peter penalty. Peter Thiel, too, by the way. Why he wanted to build that city is because he wanted yeah, to beat be. taxes and everything else. Obviously. You would have to wake up and take Dramamine every single day, all day long. I to just be in something kill like myself. That. Yeah. <laughs> I would just wake up and kill myself because, again, there is no way that my life would be good. Yeah. If that's what it was, a constant swaying or needing to get into a little dinghy to go to shore to get stuff. Yeah, no way. Not in a million years. Nope. They're building islands, man-made islands in like Dubai right now. Mm-hmm. But those are flat and you're not moving Look, around or all that that's other shit. fine. Yeah. I saw a story on uh, the Today. Um, <laughs> Today show. The Today. Yeah. Uh, today all day. That uh, this couple, hipster couple, bought a lighthouse, which is basically on an island, right? Uh And there's, you know, it's a little bit of land around it, tiny bit. Yeah. And lighthouse and then some houses there. So they turned that into a bed and breakfast resort, right? Okay. So that's about as far as I would go. But all I was thinking is if you have to do anything, you have to boat. Yeah. Boat everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so cute. It's like my hipster dream, right? Sure. You go up into the lighthouse. They redid it all cute. Is it? Is it in the United States? Yeah. Okay. Um. So it's off the coast of San Francisco. Oh. So it's just like, it's like little right. lighthouse island that's small ass. But even then, as cute as that is, I can't boat everywhere I need to go. Yeah, no, it's tough. <sighs> it's tough. Because like Lenny Kravitz and all those guys own, own private islands down in the, the Bahamas and Jamaica and all that shit. Right. And I was like, how do you get food? What they do is they raise flags. So there's like three different colored flags that they raise. And so if you're on vacation. You need medical supplies or right. food or whatever. And then somebody boats it in. And that's rad for a couple of weeks. But even sure. then, and it's again, like, vacation, hey, Sure. And again, vacation, I wouldn't have to leave unless something happened. But if that's going to be your life. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No, thank you. No, I'm I'm good with it. 
You know what you'd have to do? I also listened to another story, not on the Today, but it was a podcast, where um, there was experimental stuff uh, that they're doing with depression, where they uh, implant wires into your brain and you literally have a remote control. That's a fun thing. That can um, change your mood. Because I'd be, I'd it be, is. I'd be down for that. You would be down for that? Yeah. Ugh. To me, here's what it did to me when I heard this. So it was a girl that had horrible depression in that she, the real kind where you can't get out of bed, you're laying on the floor, mm-hmm. you're, I mean, you literally cannot find the energy yeah. to do anything. Not like I'm a little bit sad right now. Sure. Because it's dark out, like that kind of stuff. It's real depression. Um, and so they did, they were doing this experimental stuff and she like, she broke up with her boyfriend, you know, depression, depression, and tried this new thing and they turned her up to like a five or six. And I say this because it's like a dial. Okay. So it's electrodes to your brain because it is a chemical. It's something wrong in your brain, right? Things are not connecting. Things are not clicking. You're not getting the right serotonin things like this so they turn it up to five she's like euphoric right yeah i mean just the happiest you can possibly be um for three days but wasn't sleeping because it was like so you know really amped up so it didn't sleep for three days she had to go back they had to turn it off because Mm. she had had like a crazy reaction to it turned it off so then you're like, uh, back to how your brain normally is, right? That's you. Sure. And then they slowly kind of incrementally boost it up to where she's feeling normal, happy, gets back together with the boyfriend. Okay. Right. Is happy. Like starts writing. Never ah. written, never written before ever. Starts yeah. writing, yeah. writes a novel. Wow. Um, so <laughs> How did, does this end bad? Because this, it seems like you're taking me end, down a road that's going to end real it bad. It doesn't end bad right now, but the device, so she has, they got a dog. She has a remote control. She has to keep it away from the dog. If yeah. the dog touches the remote control, she could, ju- she just like yeah. crumples. Yeah. She's like one of the, you know, it's robot like, is that what it feels to you at all? Anyway, it's kind of like a robot, right? That's not you. That's not who you are. That's like, I don't know. It's not your real personality. You're not, you were never even a writer yeah, before. Yeah. And, you know, free. Was it good? Was it, like, was this book any good? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so the, the ending is not bad right now, but this device can only go up to a certain amount. And okay. you get used to the electric, you get used to a certain level and you almost plateau. And so each, I think every year she gets, every year, two years and whatever she needs to, she gets bumped up, mm-hmm. but it only goes up to like 10 or 11, whatever. Right. So at a certain age, they're hoping that, you know, it, they'll figure something else out before that scientifically, but a certain age she'll be at the end of her uplifting electrical thing. sure and then she'll just plateau or go back so you, you know she's living on like a borrowed they they talk about the electrical the the increments as like you got to save it because you only have a certain amount of time to be happy it's not like dying yeah it's that this device no I know, I know what you're talking about i that's a tough one because if she was that depressed chances are she's probably gonna die anyways yeah so you're essentially being keeping with her, her right? alive. I, so the look, husband, like, you're not with a real person. This is why I, like, stopped watching Westworld, right? Because I don't, if they're all fake, I'm not interested. Right. Does that feel at all, or is that just, like, what medication would do? Does I don't that know. I mean, feel at all, like... There's medication that... She's not a real person? Look, there's, me- there's a, medication we've all taken that we feel great on, Right. Sure. What's the difference between taking medication or, or giving you some electrodes inside your brain? I had a, I had a bad uh, blood clot once in my leg. 
uh, is from excessive writing and sitting in a prone position or whatever it was, mm-hmm. right? Uh, for too long. And I had a really cool doctor in LA. Um, sure. The, the rock doc is what they called him. You know, you know who it is, right? We know him. We know him. So he was just like, look, man, I know you're a busy dude and I know you're doing, a, you know, a ton of shit. So I'm just going to get like, I was going in for treatments. Um, mm-hmm. There was some nerve thing in my leg, right? Uh, he's, I was going in for treatment and uh, I would go there and they would sh- send these electrodes into your leg mm-hmm. and you could turn it up or turn it down, whatever it was. Like 10 was crazy, five yeah. was whatever. You start to get used to it after a while and then you start jacking it up, right? Mm-hmm. He gave it to me just to take home and said, hey, just take this with you. I don't really the give a shit. The electrode thing? Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. And like... He totally was not allowed to do that. Sure. Uh, and it was great. Mm-hmm. So I, I would, I used to use it all the time and then it ended up dying out, like burning out or whatever the fuck it was. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know really what the the difference is. Like I felt great when I was using it. And then when I wasn't, I was just like, ah, oh, shit, I should probably t- keep this on. I, I don't know. But that's not changing your personality. No, but it was changing. So, so like, it was changing the amount of pain that I was going through at the time, which was making me a negative person and like kind of depressed because of like what I was going through. You didn't like all of a sudden through. know how to play the piano. Do you know what I mean? I didn't. Which is something that can happen. But as well. this freeing up this pain and this problem that I had in my life at that time allowed me to do other things that. So here's the slippery slope with this, as as in crisp, crisper babies. You can actually have something impl- planted in your brain, and it you can put things together that you will be able to play the piano. So there's these things like man, these, that's kind of dope. It is, but <laughs> is that real? Right, like. It's just a crazy thing to think about that, like these creative people. Mm-hmm. Going back to creative brain, it's just that they have certain wires crossed. And if you wanted to, you could have the doctor cross those same wires for you. And you would be able to do the exact thing of the person like that you admire, right? Bruno Mars. I'm kidding. I hate him. Bruno. Right. <laughs> you love him. You love him. Secretly, he says he doesn't, but he no, really I, does I, love I Bruno. I really genuinely he hate every single so Bruno much, Mars song. So much. And every time he says that, I know you no. You tell me not to nope. tell the audience, but every time you say you don't like him, it's actually that you do like him. Couldn't Huge hate Bruno his music Mars anymore. More. Love him so Can't much. stand Bruno Mars. You do, and we know you love him. So um, sing a couple bars. No. I'm no. <laughs> I told you I was, so anyways, on, a, I was on a flight with him short short one to from LA to Vegas mm-hmm. um, he was performing he had some gig or whatever and it was Southwest ironically because everybody takes that Southwest flight out of Burbank it doesn't matter who you are you're nope. going to be on you're, the you're, Southwest you're going to be on the yeah. Southwest yeah. flight and he was the row behind me and I was just I looked and some other people were like oh Bruno Mars is on, on the plane I was so fucking just unimpressed I was just like who I cares? think it was you were so excited you shut down. No. But um if I had those electrodes in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could have electrodes if that I would Bruno make Mars. you like yeah. him. Electrodes in there. And I mean, this is just a weird road to go down all of a sudden. I don't care. But I just I mean, you, you think about even with medication, you know, even Britney Spears or whatever. It's like you're not living a real life. No, you're not. But do you but want to? Is do you the want question. to? I don't, like, because you start to get into and where, where the world's headed and all that other stuff. And like, look, we're already doing a lot of this shit now. So why not? I get. I guess at that point, you know, the the commercials I keep seeing for AI over and over and over again. I don't know if you keep seeing those too with like Google of like yes. we're improving your experience mm-hmm. through, AI. through AI. Everybody's using it through AI, through AI, through AI. We're headed there anyways. So what's to stop you from doing all this stuff to prevent you losing a job or something else to AI later on in the future? I told my parents, because they were here for Easter weekend, that I was like, I think maybe we might be getting out of this life just in time. I think it's more like Gattaca. Do you remember Gattaca? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's the rich 
will be able to have the things implanted in their brain. Uh-huh. We'll be able to have the CRISPR babies. And then the poor will be the people cleaning up the, the huge facility that we all go to. You know the one thing that AI can't do and never will be able to do? Comedy. Comedy? Yep. You will never be able to AI anything comedically. Yeah. Because jokes are too subjective and humor is too subjective. That's the one know, thing. They could find that algorithm too. I don't think so. Because uh, they did it for a script, by the way. They just, do you know they, they just tested it out for a screenplay? Mm-mm. Yeah, they had a, a, an AI went through all of the most successful blockbuster films of all time. Somehow formed this algorithm of what would make a successful blockbuster film script wise oh and they yes it was like an alien right some other you know people helping it the the anatomy of a comedy not a comedy basically but but a a blockbuster a blockbuster anatomy of a blockbuster yeah yeah. so like you know it was an action movie uh it was very independence day ish you know what i'm saying um and they had written this script and said this is what it was and i read the script and it was fucking dog shit yeah obviously yeah no so you're right but what they can do is find the comedy little thing in your brain that makes people funny and they can just connect those two or put an electrode to that i don't think that'll happen i don't know i'm just telling you this is what i'm talking about and then here's the difference between us probably so you know the end of vanilla sky right yes where he can either live in the dream the amazing dream with his hot ass girlfriend whatever yeah or he can go back and live a real life, whatever that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one do you choose? The dream. The dream. I choose the real life. Yeah. Yeah, I choose the dream. Because if you can, if you can live it and not know you're in it, that's the, that's the ultimate definition of ignorance is bliss. Where like, dude, the, the happiest people I meet on a daily basis are the dumbest. Because right. they, they, don't, they don't really don't care or know, know about anything else. So they're just like, yeah. all right, great. Th- this, this is, I'm living my best life right now. And you're like, ah, shit, that'd be great, wouldn't it? That just really, that story just really bummed me out because it's, it. it Saving your life, think, though. We think that we have free will. We think that we're choosing things because it's us. And it really is just a, a programmed thing, you know? Yeah. In your brain. And who, who do you think is operating that program, James? Sim world, oh we're living in a sim world, a sim world. That's where we. That's where I say goodbye. I want to get that. So that that guy. That's where I say goodbye again. Quick update. He said he would come on in a couple of weeks. Nice. The guy who wrote the sim world, the MIT uh, scientist who wrote that that sim world book. So we'll see if he comes on. I'd be. This is endlessly fascinating to me because I'm with you on this. Like all, all of this stuff that's going on right now with the electrodes in the brain to stop depression and or play piano or everything else. Like it seems like a sci-fi movie. It seems like it's not real. Right. If you're watching something like Westworld, right? We're starting to get closer and closer to that where it's all right, great. You don't want to do this or you want to live like this or you want to have your own, you know, experiences like, you're getting closer to that. Here's another layer. I don't think it's sim. I think it's we think we are, um, again, making decisions for ourselves. But it's just like the squirrel that thinks that they're deciding to go, you know, out to get the nut. And they're like, it's, that's what it is. That they think that they've decided on their own and it really is just like ingrained and it's what they all do. And it's like... You know? Yeah. So that's the layer of like, if you, that a scientist can tell you what you're going to choose based on how they, you know what I'm saying? Or I, what I, you, I think you're what coming you around, James. I think you're coming around. Not, <laughs> not that there's someone like we're in an ant, we're in an, you know, in an ant farm that some bigger person is controlling. I just think that, you know, we are all programmed to do the things that we do neurologically. That's just, yeah. And, and that if you think that you're choosing anything, you're not. 
I that don't know. Something could get crossed in your they that a someone a scientist can come in a neuro, neurologist whatever can come in, change things around a little bit in your brain, and you would think something completely different, choose something completely different. You can't overcome that, right? No, you can't. You can't. I think I think you will eventually get to where I want you to be. <laughs> And I think maybe I'm controlling your mind now at this point. And I no. think. And you're not even controlling your own mind. You will come around to. It's all just electrodes and fucking Sim pathways. World. Yeah, it is. <laughs> In your own brain, dummy. <laughs> Don't have an answer. No one will ever have an answer. This no. is this is the this is the point that I always make. It's like eh, until you die, and you, and then even then you can't come back. You don't know the answer, right? You don't know the fucking answer. I do know the answer though to the revolutionary figure of the week, James. <laughs> what a weird show this was. I like it. I like when shit gets weird like this. Me too. Where you're just like, hey man, I have, I have no idea. Um, we're gonna give it to the queen, Queen Elizabeth. She's fucking ninety three years old. When is she going to go? That's what I keep every time. I'm sure her whole family is like, okay, we Man, are good. 93 years mm-hmm. old. That is crazy to me. The son that's taking over is just like, I don't even want to fucking do it anymore. Who is it? It's um Charles. It is. Okay. Yeah. So he becomes, he becomes king. And then. Uh, She's going to be so fucking old by that time. I know. He may even go before she does. Holy shit. And then if that happens, then it goes down to William, right? Mm-hmm. I'd be I'd be there for that. That'd be dope. And then I think it's like ten other people before Big Willie before the uh, the other yeah, one. Yeah, Prince Harry is seventh. Yeah, he's uh, seventh. not ever gonna. So six do other it. people have to die. So the queen, his brother, the dad. Oh shit! I, his wife, Big Willie's wife, dude. She gets she gets it. She's in line. She would be the queen. Wait, would her Kate Middleton would be the queen? Yeah, but um, what about her husband, the queen, right now? He's not alive. He's not? No, I don't think so, right? Yeah, he is. Is he really? Yeah. Fuck. How was that guy then? <sighs> dirt. As old as dirt. <laughs> I don't think he's alive. Yeah, he no is, way to find though. out. He is. I'll give James a pass. The internet is not working uh, today, so... I mean, really not working today. Um, I'm sure you guys will tell us. Yeah. We've had no internet the whole time, which we've, is we've had no, no different no for me. No internet today, which is no different for you. It's, it's no it's different for me. For me I though. never look anything up. Yeah. But I think he's alive. Well, look. he's And it, he just, it, if he's kind of like wheeled out. Here's the thing. If Harry's seventh, six other people have to die. So you got the queen, maybe this husband that may or may <laughs> not exist, Jesse, because I'm not, I'm not with you on that one. Um then you have William. William. Then you have the wife. Kate. We're missing. I'm sure there's a sister in there. Is there a si- No, there's no sister. No. Oh, shit. What about, th- what, what about, what about his new cousin. wife? What about that Camilla Parker Bowles? Because like, yeah. that's, that's mm. his wife. Does she get it then? No. She does not. No. Because Princess Diana would have been. She was divorced before and. Not, not royal. I don't know how that works. There's, there's also a rumor going around today, but by, by the way, that uh, after the baby, Meghan Markle and uh, Prince Harry might move to Africa. Which I don't think that's that's. I don't think that's real. I don't think her pregnancy is real either. But you yeah, know. you want to you want you want you it's really don't known, believe it. Widely known. No, it, you, it's a you widely the known only rumor. One who thinks no, that. it's widely known that she's pulling a Beyonce belly. No, mm-hmm. you s- and she does not want to walk out with the baby after or tell anyone when they're having the birth. They're gonna wait a couple weeks and reveal like a sip and see style. So you because you're she's the not pregnant. You're the only one who thinks Beyonce's. You you think Beyonce's I wasn't the only one. first pregnancy was was and I not wasn't real. the only one. That was a widely known. <laughs> when she sat down in the thing and it collapsed down, that was a really <laughs> well known rumor that still to this day people believe. Well, we watched the docs, so we know she had the twins. We she know was she had the twins. Allegedly, that. we do know she had the twins. No, she did. We saw the we, documentary. I didn't see that them was... come out of the vagina. Uh, is, which that, I didn't is that want... going to be your 
precipice for with all of this people, is like you need to you see know, a, with these... you need to see the the crowning. You need to see the celebrity start crowning. No. So let me ask you this: if you if you had the option to go in to Meghan Markle, right, mm-hmm. and, and watch her crown and watch her give birth. Would you want to be there just to, to be like, all right, this is real? No, but I want her to stop fucking up the crown. I want her to stop fucking Which up. crown? Just the whole. Oh, the royal lineage. The whole gotcha. royal shit. I thought you meant you the crown of the baby coming out. Like, stop the, like, quit fucking up the crown. She's of that. not going to fuck up the crown because she's not really giving birth to it. So they have a surrogate. <laughs> And she is just like everything else in her life being dumb and stupid. (laughs) And she's going to do it her way. You're going to marry a fucking prince, move to England, move into the thing, and then do it your way. Your fuck out of my face. Your hatred for her is my favorite thing in this life. It's deep. Yeah, it's my favorite thing in this life. Not pregnant. So she's not going to do the, she's not going to do, she's, she has said, I'm not. You know how Kate Middleton walks out yeah, yeah, yeah. two hours after she gives birth yeah. like a fucking boss. Yeah. Looking great, holding the baby because it's tradition. The whole fucking royal thing is tradition. Who the fuck do you think you are? Suits. Suits. <laughs> That's it. That's all you've she done. Was on suits. She was on suits. She was on suits. For a lot of seasons, Chase. I don't know. I don't know who Prince Harry is. Yeah. We don't seasons. really like follow the royal family out here. <laughs> Shut up, you <laughs> dumb bitch. Knocked up immediately. <laughs> well, you, you're saying she wasn't knocked up immediately. You're saying they had a surrogate immediately. Yeah, I think she had some frozen. I think she had some eggs. Okay. I think she, she had some eggs already. And she was like, we got to do this. I'm a millennial cusper. Yeah. Is what she said. I'm a millennial cusper. You're a young guy. <laughs> and um, I can't wait. When, when she does drop that baby. She's not going to show you for two weeks. So there's going to be no. Doesn't matter. We're doing something special for her on the show. And uh, we might even have a whole show dedicated to the birth of the baby. I won't do it. Is there a. We, we don't even know if it's a boy or a girl yet, right? Um, I don't know. The surrogate hasn't probably said. <laughs> They haven't revealed. I hope they name it something completely non-royal, just like Stevie. They're gonna, they're gonna, um, Stevie. raise it fluid, gender fluid. <laughs> they did say, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. who is it? Yeah. Uh, it was Charlize Theron that Charlize. came out and said her seven-year-old, seven-year-old is transgender. Seven-year-old is transgender. What the fuck is that? It's just what people are. Um, doing now because the whole fucking world has gone crazy but this seven is, I mean, years we're old going, we're in overtime now seven we're in the after show part of the you show you don't know what you're doing at seven to make you those still kind believe of in santa judgments. <laughs> you still believe that santa is real comes down the chimney to every single house yeah but you know what you want to be for the rest of your life and then you start home hormone therapy that's crazy. They're not going to do that to a seven-year-old, right? Oh, they have? To hers? They haven't to hers, but that's oh. a pretty, in this world, Yikes. is pretty common. That would be fucking They start insane. them before puberty. They'll start hormone. Man, she looked weird. She's looked weird in all of those press interviews for that new Seth Rogen movie. They look like they fucking hate each other. And Probably I wonder. Probably because she fucking says shit like that. Probably. And people have to, I mean, this is something that right and left somewhat can get on the same page as far as the kids. Yeah. So when we're talking about adults doing whatever the fuck they want, they feel a certain way. I don't give a shit. Right. Right. Do your hormone therapy after puberty, whatever you want, you know? Yeah. But it's when you're, I think every, a lot of people can agree that when you are talking about giving hormones to a child uh, because they feel like they want to be something else. They don't, they don't know. That's the thing. Yeah. Kids don't know. They want to be astronauts. They want to be firemen. They want to dress up like girls, like their little friends at school. They want to one day be in a suit. Like they are literally all over the place. Children. 
they are children. They don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. And um, that's a pretty wild statement of her to come out and say that it's seven years old. Like, come on, man. Let the kid grow. Like, it's, there's there's got to be an age limit imposed and all, and all of this shit because it's it should be eighteen. It's too confusing. It should be eighteen, especially for a child. Mm-hmm. Maybe so. Maybe maybe that was the reason. Like you know, fucking Seth Rogen's just like I'm over this stupid shit. He probably thought in his mind when he wrote the script. He was just like, man, this. This would have been awesome. If I could just make out with Charlize Theron in, a, in an entire movie, this is going to be great. Yeah, he does that all the time. And then he got taken to crazy town. Maybe that was the end of the Charlize Theron thing with uh, Sean Penn, too. Sean Penn? Maybe. I, Sean s- I Penn saw him on an interview be... the other night. Sean? Yeah. Sean Penn? What was he doing? He pops up on Conan. Conan O'Brien. For what? Conan O'Brien's got this new format where he's just kind of... I don't know. He's, he looks like he's he's somebody's dressing him from H and M. It's weird. Where you're just like, man, he's in like a jean jacket now instead of a thing, and he doesn't sit behind a desk. They they shrunk the show from an hour to a half hour. Okay. So he pretty much just sits with one guest for a half hour, right, and chats about life. All and right. Sean Penn. Okay. Sean Penn was just you know looked like he was on a fifty day bender on the show. Hey. He always does. Still cool though, you know. Yeah. Still cool looking and just. Oddly, you know, unaffected by life. Uh, his clothes, you know, he looked like he had slept in them. Showed up and was just like, what are we talking about? Cool. Here, here it is. Um, oddly entertaining. But those two were together for a long time. They were. And then um, they split up. And I wonder if, I wonder if uh, he got tired of the bullshit. I heard it was cheating but on her. But uh, maybe because she was into this fucking bullshit. This is just, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know who... I don't know what it says about you. <laughs> it's crazy. That you would say that and say it. Yeah, yeah, Do you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. make a statement about it. Yeah. Make your kid like this. See, he knows. Now the kid's got to go through that. Because look, you're famous as shit. And now it's just like, oh, there's Charlize Theron, the, 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 the seven-year-old transgender. And you know Brad Pitt's, one of their kids uh, dresses like a boy. Yeah. Um, I don't think they've made any statement about it. No, they just said they let them dress however they want. And that's and cool. That's cool. Yeah. Like, seriously, that is fine. Yeah. Like, find whatever it is. Like, that's okay. Yeah. Kids will dress fucking weird as shit yeah. until they figure out who they are, right? And if they continue to dress like that, fine. They always would, <laughs> right? But that does not mean that they need um, hormone replacement. No. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And again, that's a big label to throw on a child that young, especially in the oh. public eye where you've got to go through that and everything else. That's outing someone. Like, they're not even old enough to come out. Weird. It's weird. This is a weird show, James, but I enjoyed it. Well, the after hours was. With the, with, with the after hours? The added innings. Because we did the revolutionary figure and then we decided to well, talk not? about some other Who stuff. gives a shit? It's our own show. We can do whatever we Well, you want. got me started on Meghan Markle is what it was. I know. I, do not bring her fucking name up. I like to get you all hyped up on Meghan Markle. God, I fucking hate her so much. <laughs> oh, when she drops that baby, dude. I, we're having a show for the ages. When her surrogate nope. has the baby. Nope. And if it's Go on ahead. an off day, we're going to come in and add a bonus show <laughs> for the birth of Meghan Markle, for the birth of her baby, uh, or the rebirth of Meghan Markle, you know? She'll probably make As it a, a rebirth. Mom. Yeah. Ah, it's going to be good. Oh, it's going to be so good. Special show. Stay tuned for that. Also, subscribe to the video show on YouTube. Almost every, every single show knows video. Yep. Every single show. So we're doing it. Everyone here. We're doing it. Subscribe on YouTube, Ross Patterson Revolution. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.